So why would you need DuckDB when you've got the Python bears like pandas and boars? How is that useful? Well, a lot of Pythonist people are asking themselves why and when would they even use a database like DuckDB within their Python workflows. In this video, we'll understand what are the main features of pandas, polars and DuckDB and what each one brings to the table. And yes, there will be code and benchmarks. So are they enemies or lovers? They are lovers. Wait, did you just spoil the what? entire video? So what is TuckDB, Pandas and Polars? TuckDB is a lightweight OLAP database built in C++. And you probably are thinking, but why I need a database within my Python environment? Even this guy said, if your data fits in memory, there is no advantage to putting it in a database. It will only be slower and more frustrating. Thanks, our folks. Except that DuckDB is an in-process database. So within the Python ecosystem, it will run under the same process as your Python application. And you can just do a pip install DuckDB and you are ready to use your embedded database. DuckDB is fast, blazingly fast. It contains a colonar vectorized query execution engine where queries are still interpreted, but a large batch of value, a vector, are processed in one operation. DuckDB has a lot of built-in features or rather extension like JSON support, trading, writing over S3, special data, and so forth. These extensions are nice because it prevents you from thinking of what Python package you need for some action. This extension had dependencies, but it's really lightweight and it's not Python dependencies. They are downloaded and loaded directly in DuckDB when needed. DuckDB can read from different file formats, but also provide its own single file ACID compliant file format. It has a Python relational API, which enables you to have more of Pythonist approach when coding in Python. Finally, DuckDB can query Arrow datasets directly and stream query result back to Arrow. And if you don't know what Apache Arrow is, it's an open source standardized language agnostic columnar memory format. In a nutshell, it's an universal translator for data. It's a tool that different programs use to understand and work with data quickly and effectively. More on that later. If you wanna watch you getting started with DuckDB, watch out the video there or here or in the description. Jumping on pen. was first released in 2008. Oh man, that was a long time ago. And it had a significant release earlier this year in 2023, Pandas 2.0 with a lot of improvement. Because it was one of its first bringing the data frame concepts, by the way, still from Air language, again, the Air folks, they were first. It became the de facto standard in Python for data analysis and process. It supports a lot of file formats, CSV, JSON, and can read and write for Parquet, and also directly from remote storage like S3, BigQuery, etc. Since Panda 2.0, it has been shifting to Apache Arrow instead of NumPy for their backend data. This change enables efficient data representation and operation and make Pandas more robust and versatile. And again, because of its popularity, it has been supported by a lot of data visualization tools like Seaborn, Plotly, Bokeh, ggplot, and so forth. All right, Polars. Polars is a new kit in town everybody is talking about. It's also blazingly fast. It's leveraging Rust in the backend to multi-thread some part of the process. It also use Apache Arrow colonar format as the memory model. Polaris employs lazy evaluation to optimize query execution, which can result in faster operation, particularly when working with a large dataset. Lazy evaluation is a technique where certain operation or computation are delayed until they are absolutely necessary. So if you do filtering or ordering, for example, on your dataset and using a lazy data frame, they would only be executed until you do the call, which will prevent you create and store intermediate results in memory. It's a neural library which allows to learn from the design decision and the limitation of pandas. So based on the features of all this framework, we can already see significant difference in terms of initial workflow. DuckDB is a light SQL DB with a file format, built-in extension, and is SQL driven, but has other APIs. 
while Pandas and Polars are Python data frame Procus library. Yes, you can use Polars also in Rust. DuckDB and Polars are fast and can process larger than memory datasets. However, the techniques they use are different. So let's dive into the code. So we are going to cover a simple use case where we read data locally, do a couple of transformations, and write the output dataset to S3. All the code and dataset will be provided link in the description. And because this needs to be filmed, we are going to answer the following question. Which website feed the most hacker news? And if you don't know what hacker news is, it's a website run by Y Combinator where people share and discuss articles about computers and business. User can post links and to interesting articles, vote on them and talk about them in the comments. It's similar to Reddit, but focus on technology and started topics, basically. Our dataset contained data from 2008 to 2022. It's about 33 millions of rows stored as one parquet file, which is about the size of five gigabytes compressed parquet file. For each framework, we'll discuss the installation, independency, the syntax use, uh, performance, and versatility. All are Python libraries. That being said, some features require dependencies from other packages, like writing to S3. For DuckDB, that's not really the case, as such a feature are covered by the extensions. So you don't need an extra Python package. To give you an idea about the size of all those dependencies and Python package, let's have a look at side packages. So this is where basically all the Python package are installed. And I did three different installation, one for pandas, Polars, and you guess it, DuckDB. In this case, the one that required the less dependency is DuckDB. It's also worth to know that still Polars is a lighter way library compared to pandas. This size is not just telling you how much space your program is going to take on your container, but also in general, less dependencies, less code, less code, less problems. Versatility. So as we mentioned, DuckDB can be used outside Python. You have a CLI with SQL interface, but also binding for Rust, Java, and even recently Swift enabling DuckDB for mobile. Polars outside Python and Rust has just released a CLI written in Rust to execute a couple of SQL action. I haven't tried it and it's still really early. Pandas is stick to Python for good or bad, but it has a wide range of data visualization library support. However, due to Arrow's flexible format and the fact that all these frameworks support Arrow, they can easily integrate to each other with negligible performance costs, thanks to Arrow and the zero copy of data feature. For instance, DuckDB can provide data as either a pandas or a polar data frame. In Polars, there is a built-in command to convert a pandas data frame. DuckDB is built on SQL, so you can do everything using that that being said, there is a relational API for a couple of methods to have a more Pythonist approach. In my example here, to extract the domain from the URL, do a group by and count the number of appearance, I'm doing some regex. And as you can see, this is how it will look like if I'm using the relational API, but you can do all these operations through a single SQL query. Data frame versus SQL is always a big debate. In my opinion, when working with Python, I like the data frame approach because I can have a lot more ints into those methods when I construct my operation. Pana doesn't have a SQL interface and it's more a data frame style. As you can see, it's really similar, but you can query pandas with SQL using other Python packages or DuckDB, thence again to Arrow. That's all it will look like if you do so. Polars, while being also data frame oriented library, do have a SQL interface that has been released earlier this year, I believe. So you can combine also both. Up to you, SQL or data pre. All right, let's talk about performance. In terms of performance when running all the scripts, DuckDB was the faster. A few comments. Panda didn't manage to get it through. I could optimize maybe the codes, but anyway, it was really greedy for memory. When comparing against a sample of data taking only 2021, for the, all the three frameworks, Pandas was still the slower pipeline. For Polars, I had to use lazy evaluation data frame, otherwise it will blow up also my memory. 
And it might sound like a no-brainer because as I said, it's an optimization technique, but just to say that you need to be aware of those features within the framework to be able to use it correctly. For both Pandas and Polars, it was sometimes not clear in their documentation which Python package I need to read and write to S3 or which way is the most straightforward as I had different options. This is mostly a documentation issue, but worth to mention. Oh, and I forget the most important, the results. So the top website are GitHub, Medium, and YouTube, which is interesting to know and not a surprise because, you know, it's tech news website. So if you want to be features on Hacker News, probably writing a Medium blog is the easiest way to get attention. All right, let's wrap up. So DuckDB is way more versatile than Polars and Pandas. And the reason is that the scope of DuckDB is just bigger. It's a full OLAP database and it has different client APIs. Through our specific use case with Hacker News, we found out that DuckDB was indeed faster, putting Polars in number two, and I'm not sure if we can put Pandas in number three because it killed my memory. We also discussed that thanks to Apache Arrow, we can actually use one or more of those frameworks together as we can easily convert back and forth the data frames with no performance degradation. So should you use DuckDB within your Python workflow? Well, based on the features we elaborated in the first part of the video, it depends on your use case. Yeah, I know, it's a lame answer. But one thing sure is that DuckDB can easily be installed with just a pip install. So, you know, why not do it? Just do it. It had little to no overhead to your development and you can use it for processing faster your pipeline. TLDR, you can leverage the best of all worlds. That's it for this video. Thanks for streaming along with us today and see you next time.